Okay. I'm sorry, but I had a whole hour and 15 minutes of uh, watching a kind of drunk guy learn how to weld while, relearn how to weld while he became a really drunk guy. And it ended up okay, but unfortunately the battery died, so. Mm. I'm going to just put the camera down now. The welder has cooled off and just grab a couple pieces of metal and see if I can lay a, a bead after a, about an hour of torturing my poor swing arm, which I will be trusting my life with, and a fifth tank ray time and see what happens. So let's put it over here. By the way, uh, it's not recommended to weld in toe shoes, but you'll see. This is where I'll be welding. And you can see that. Okay. the gear all the time but the one thing you gotta have is a pair of gloves especially when you're drunk and don't know how to weld hello this is the last of the bottle What can we do with it? Okay, let's try a, a butt weld. By the way, setting up the welder was a piece of cake. Just had to throw a little tension on the on the feed screw inside. This is like the cheapest Lincoln electric you can get at Home Depot. Let's get some ground. Let's put a little weight on it. Just a little bit of space. Just a little bit of open space. We'll test this well later. We're gonna do a butt weld, and I got maybe a sixteenth of an inch open space there. A lot of situations you won't have that open space, but in this case we do. And then my case, it probably doesn't matter. I'm gonna make a shit weld anyway. Alright. This piece of shit, this Lincoln Electric Weld Pack HD, there's not even any numbers on it. That's how cheap it is. It's $269 at Home Depot. And you need to open the box before you leave the store, or you're gonna come home and find yourself with a unit with. Uh, nothing in the box except this unit and a gun that's been used for a month all worn out stripped out no tip no shield no wire no awesome slag hammer brush no nothing but a worn out gun and you're going to end up going back to home depot and asking them what they can do for you and they're going to tell you nothing 
Anyway, cheapest one they got. And the, mo the best one I could afford at the time. So, mock tack. Chop, mock, and tack. That's what this thing is good for. Let's try it. The most important thing is to keep it consistent. You're going to find out as you strike the arc and you're trying to keep the arc going, you're going to hear it. You're going to see it in here. You're going to see the puddle building and you're going to hear the sound of it. And you're going to realize that you are in the sweet spot and you just have to maintain that spot. You just have to maintain your angle and move back. And that's key. You, unless you're welding up and pushing a puddle when you want to go deep, you need to be moving back. Otherwise, you're going to end up with big old cavities. So anyway, enough of me talking shit. Let's see if I can remember what I just learned over the past hour or so. trigger and stay there don't pull the trigger and pull it back because you can end up with the hole we left off and that was a really shitty weld as I was talking to you I, I was just welding this left piece of metal and not in the middle and you may not be able to see it I don't know if you can see that but you look on the back side, the first part of the weld has like a sixteenth of half penetration. There's still, I can break this right now, I'm pretty sure. You can see that. There's nothing there. That was. I was kind of proud of the first part of that weld. Alright. Let's try another one. This is take two of drunk guy tries to figure out how to weld. Maybe I'm pushing wire too fast. I don't know. Let's push the wire speed down to about nine. be tempted to just kind of get in there and let the arcs cut it off, but I just wire brushed a whole shitload of uh, dead stuck leads off my swing arm, so. Alright, let's try this one. You got this handy dandy hand shield. You get it set, you get it close, you know. It's, Three eighths, quarter of an inch. The book, which I read cover to cover, actually left column of a bunch of pages. I didn't understand the other two columns. It gave me a refresher. So about three eighths of an inch. 
and don't be in a hurry. I think that's the biggest. I think this is the biggest mistake I've made is uh, moving too quick. You know, you're you're trying to heat up the metal on both sides and fill it up a little bit, and maybe that's my problem. I'm pushing metal into it too fast, and I'm building up a, a big lump in the bead and moving on before the actual uh, components of the weld have melted. So, let's slow it down to eight. I think that might help. I think the power needs to be all the way up on this bad boy because I'm working on some probably eighth inch metal, which is the max this guy's supposed to be able to weld. And which you absolutely won't unless they do both sides. Alright. Get your tip close, get your shield in place. And as you start it up, you know, you might stop stop and start. You might pop. You know, you might pull it away, etc. It might stick. Just just go with it and establish a bead. You're not building a space shuttle, you're just trying to weld a couple pieces of metal together. away from it because then you're just heating up your, your bead, your puddle, you're not heating up the metal around it. I just got stuck because I was talking to you. You guys are distracting me. So I'm just going to leave it there and do what I would do if I was, well I'm just going to, if I got stuck, I would just kind of twist it and keep moving. Oops, that didn't work out so well. Let's just start up where I left off. That's where I was coming up short on the other wall to my swing arm is ended up with big old divots, big old craters, because I pulled away when I stopped. And what happened was I ended up with a hole in my metal. It, the puddle just kind of, you know, just had a hole in it. And then I had a long lead. And in this case, I just leave it where it's at and end up with no lead and no puddle. Or, I mean, no crater. And it ain't pretty. And I'm pretty sure it won't hold if I try to break it, but it's better. Can you see that? If I look on the other side, I see a lot of heat, but it's not, it's not penetrating. This is a, uh, well, this is probably a quarter inch, no, a little less than a quarter inch steel. I don't know what gauge it is. Let's try to break it. It's not breaking. That's what it, the flux leaves kind of a tan film. And there's little, little beads around there, but they come off with a brush, this brush or a wire brush on your bench grinder, which is what I did to the swing arm. They're ugly welds, but uh, these are not actually, this is a rosette, these are not actually, this is a broken off bolt and this is a broken off tap and I just kind of covered over and they melted up pretty fucking, they, they, they didn't stand up to the 80 amp welder. I'm pretty proud of the inside of one of these. can't see it, but I'm pretty sure it's a good weld. For rosettes, we're kind of like, I have a slug in here, uh, a steel slug that I put in to hold everything together. So I did the, I ground these down, 
around the ends of these down to a valley so I could get down into the slug and I kind of started my bead there and melded the uh, tubes to the solid slug. And then for the rosettes, I started in the middle of the hole and I started building a puddle and just kind of work my way around and from the, from the solid slug I built a puddle that's melded to it and then I weld it to the actual tube. That's, that's my strategy. And I'm going to leave these as they are, as ugly as they are, and see what happens. I'm just kind of watch them, see if anything breaks. I'll give it some stress. I'm pretty good at that. Anyway. Let's try something else. That butt weld is pretty good. It's not quite halfway through this guy, but if I give it a, if I give it a run on the other side, it's not going to break. Oh, that's still hot. All right, let's try that. By the way, all this talking has been so the welder can cool down. This cheap welder is a 20% duty cycle, which means for every uh, two minutes you weld, you have to wait eight minutes for it to cool down. And you don't need to have a stopwatch because it'll remind you by tripping your breakers for you. Up. I don't know what it looks like on that camera, but we'll try this. Hmm. Let's try this. That would help. Again, this is drunk guy learns how to weld again. That's how you get too close and stick your lead. Popping and more steady sizzle, but um, it wasn't bad. So I started talking to you. Hey, fuck you. Stop distracting me. And I'll just start where I left off. It's just metal. You can melt it, you can melt it down. It's going to build up, but you can. Wow, I guess that high density light, that uh, this shop light, really shows what this welder does to the circuit. I know it's hot. 
I'm gonna step on it anyway. <clears throat> That's what happens. That's well. Right, I can smell my shoe burning. <laughs> tubes. Unfortunately I don't have a jig or any clamps or any so I have to just kind of hold it with no shield and pray. Alright, fuck it. That thing's got a bunch of paint on it. We'll ground to this guy, which is the longer one. Alright. Here's a shield, which I can't use because I only have two hands. So I'm basically going to set this, well first I'm going to take a drink. Sad moment when this drink is done. That's the end of the bottle. I'm just gonna hold this guy in place. I'm sure there's some fancy official way to do this, but I don't have one. But I do know from my practice welds that it takes a lot more than you think tack this thing in place, so don't be in a hurry. Get set. Turn your head away. Don't even think about looking, because it'll kind of fuck up your process, you know, your, your workflow. Look away and start to weld, and hold it in place. That didn't work out so well. That lead is stuck, but there's only like a half inch there, so I'm just going to try to break it off. And I'm just going to kind of weld there and pray that I'm in the right spot and I'm not in the right shit together. And I wasn't. I was all the way up on the tube. I was all... Man. Having tools is a good thing. Helps the job work. Alright. I'm going to use the bottom as a base now. It's kind of my point of reference. I'm just going to work up from it. Alright, you can't see my face, but I'm looking at it now. Getting it about a quarter inch away. Turning my head away. I'm going to start my art. Wow, I just totally burned the shit out of that bottom tube. It's a beautiful little magma ball. You can't see that, but uh, I would just burn a hole in that tube. I wasn't even, I didn't even touch this guy. It might be because it has paint on it. I thought the heat might, uh, and the contact might let the... Hmm. I hope y'all are getting bored. This is my practice piece. I'm pretty happy with it. But it has no paint on it, so let's try using it.
It's all burnt up. Let's see if we can't fix that. It's got a big burn through hole in it. Okay, set my set my gun. I'm turning my head away. All right. I don't know what happened there, but it's not falling down. So I can grab my shield and I can get it on there. This is called a fillet weld or a fillet weld, depending on uh, how much money you got. I haven't tried it, but it's best to keep your hand off the red trigger when you're grabbing the wire cutters and cutting your lead off. I'm moving back and I'm pushing my pedal ahead of me. And in this case, I am just exacerbating that burn. So I guess uh, once you burn through a piece, you're pretty well fucked with this equipment at least. So don't do that. Don't burn through it. You can't like fill it in. You can't even. Well, I guess I mean you could build up a big ass pot, big ass pile run after run, but I might be too hot for this. Let's put it down to uh, high one instead of high two. Because the two pounds so thick. I've already burned through this side pretty bad. Let's turn it over and take another side. This is a virgin side. No damage to the base or to the tube. Let's see what happens. I'm pushing the puddle ahead of me as I move back. And I think I just uh, welded the tube and not the base. And, well, I'll leave that alone and let, put it on the wire brush and see what happens. What does it look like on the bottom? Yeah, you can't see anything. There's no heat penetration on the bottom at all. I'll try one more virgin side. And I think I need to go. Let's try. Uh, Let's try even a lower wire speed, like uh, a six, because I think I'm building up too fast and moving on before it's high time to penetrate. Keep in mind all you, uh, all you welders out there, uh, I haven't touched a welder since I was 14, which was 30 plus years ago, and it was uh, a stick welder, so I'm doing my best, I'm just trying to you know, keep the faith and uh, show the other hackers and choppers out there that they can just grab towards and go. It's not.